Hello everybody and welcome to Three Colours Up. In this one we're going to be tackling the Bermuda Sloop from the Blood and Plunder 2 player starter set. Not really something I've been, I'm very familiar with. Ships are definitely tanks of the sea, I guess. <laughs> uh, this is a bit of a, John doesn't really know what he's talking about, so I do ask you and uh, you guys in a couple of uh, places, give me some comments down below and let me know uh, I'm probably wrong, but this. So um, this is a, a rather large model, one of the larger models I've had on Three Colors Up, so camera angles are going to be a little odd, um, but as always, I'm trying to keep it simple, straightforward, and easily repeatable. So you know it's going to be contrasts, inks, washes, that sort of stuff. Anything to keep things nice and simple, anything to keep things repeatable, and to give you a result that is going to be interesting and good looking on a tabletop. So beyond that, all I can say is let's go get down to the table and let's paint it. So to begin this rather large project, um, we've primed everything in um, Mechanica Standard Grey. Other greys are available, um, but I kind of wanted to use this as a sort of um, a mid-tone uh, for the rest of the, the colours because we are going to be doing a bit of dry brushing now and we're going to be using contrast paints so we'll be utilising a lot of uh, quick techniques to uh, to get our ship done. So everything is done in that. So let's move those, all of the, the ancillary stuff to the side and we'll bring our hull in. So first step is a dry brush and for our dry brush we're going to be doing Citadel Wraithbone and we're going to be doing this because obviously contrast paints need a bright to uh, a bright sort of layer to work a bit better. And we're using Wraithbone over the grey because again, mid-tone highlight, and then that's going to assist uh, our contrast paints later on. So we're going to, we're using a large dry brush as well. So, but this is going to be probably the most painful step. So, I mean, if you get past this, you should be pretty golden for the rest of the miniature. So, in fact, I'm just gonna, yeah, we should be fine. So, let's get started and see where we go. So, obviously, we're gonna be doing everything. And the, for example, here, the decking, the actual decking is gonna be a little bit brighter or a little bit heavier on the dry brush because we want it to be a bit brighter. We are using a different contrast paint for it than we are on the outside, but if we go a little bit heavier on it, it won't do us any harm. With our dry brush done, you can see what I'm trying to do here is pick out all that great wood grain, the slight curves of some of the edges and stuff like that. Some of this may not matter as the color scheme develops, but for now, I think enough of it matters, <laughs> enough of it's there that it does matter. So we're going to continue doing our broad brush, our broad strokes. Uh, so we're going to be using another contrast paint to paint the decking. And for that, we're going to be using just simple skeleton horde. So we're doing the skeleton horde, we're doing the decking now because there are other colors that need to go in here that um, could potentially mess things up a little bit if we get them wrong. However, everything else we do after the decking is going to be a darker color. So it doesn't matter if we're a little bit messy with this. So let's get our skeleton horde down, really slosh it in here and see what we get in the end. With our skeleton horde decking down and mostly dry, <clears throat> what I had to do, uh, if you watched the start of the clip where I was sort of just brushing it on, it wasn't really working, I was getting too much of the grey through. What I ended up doing was actually taking my brush and stippling uh, all over the decking. So the layer that I've put down is very heavy, it's taking a long time to dry, it's still not entirely dry, as you can see around the hatch covers and the, the edges, just isn't quite dry yet. However, it's dry enough that we can move on. So we're going to move on to the inner walls uh, of the ship, and going by the, um, the sort of uh, color guide that I have for uh, Blood and Plunder, uh, well not Blood and Plunder but more their um, Oak and Iron, the inside walls are all red so for this I'm going to be using Flesh Terror's red because it's a nice deep red and we're going to be painting all the inner panels uh, of the walls except for 
this one here and this piece up here. Uh, mainly because we're going to be changing color for that. So let's get some flesh chairs red down in here. This is just another step that's going to take us a while and we're just going to have to bear with it and start to be a little bit more neat than than we were with the with the first step that's for sure and um once this is down we'll be able to pick out some more wood colors because we're not done with wood yet funnily enough with most of the ship being wood so we'll get this down make sure we're as neat as possible and when we come back we'll move on to our next color with our red now down and dry uh, you can see the sort of contrast you're getting between the decking and that inner sort of wall there. I've also had to stand over this for about five minutes with a, a hair dryer to try and get the, the skeleton horde dry because I'm leaving, you see here, I'm leaving stains everywhere. This thing's leaking. Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> so we're going to move on now to the next color of wood and that is going to be Saigor Brown. Um, I was going to go Wildwood because some of the, the, the wood on this ship is supposed to be quite dark, but um, we're going to do Saigor uh, because it's going to be a, an interesting, hopefully an interesting mid-tone at least. And um, well, let's just see what it looks like on the outside. So on the back of the ship here, this panel up here is going to go our color for the French, it's sort of a teal turquoisey kind of color, but the rest of it is going to go this Saigor. Uh, the very lowest part, I think, is going to go black, um, but the the banding along the hull is going to be black, as well as the top of the rails. So we might not do that just for a little bit of um, artistic license, which you can tell me off for. But let's see what the Saigor looks like over our base coat. I think if we're careful with this, this should give us just enough with that um, dry brush underneath it. I'd say a couple of passes with the brush just to thin it out a little bit. Ought to give us the color I'm sort of looking for here. So this is going to be interesting because now we have to do all the remaining wood with this color. With the Saigor brown down, we can now see our ship is now starting to get quite a lot of colour about it and a little more interesting looking. We've also done the hatch covers and the internal wall for the uh, compartment under here, which is fine. Uh, on the back, yeah, yeah, I think we're fine. So now we're going to move on to a little bit of a brighter colour and there's something I want to explain as well. Um, if you watched our Weekender XLBS, uh, I think was it last week, something like that, there was a really nice Blood and Plunder uh, project that got one of our community spotlights. And um, they had painted one of these ships. And as Jerry was explaining, the cannons would have been the same color as the internal walls, so this red. However, because this is eventually going to aim to be under camera and we want to make sure we don't lose any parts, I'm going to paint the cannons the same color as the sort of bright teal sort of color uh, or the, the blue sort of color that's going to go on the, the this part of the ship. That way we just know that those cannons belong to that ship in particular and we don't lose them or if we do lose them when we find them we know where they go. So for that blue we're going to be using scale color hero blue. It's a very nice very bright color this is going to be a very interesting one uh, to, to go down. So we need to make a nice blob of that and then we're going to have to take our time because this paint can be fairly thin so we want to take our time and we're probably going to have to do multiple coats to get this down nice and smoothly although that ain't too bad for a first pass so this is why we haven't done any smaller details yet because we need to get all these major colors down first and then all our railing and our banding and stuff like that is really going to incorporate into it a tidy up step for this as well. So as you can see now we have our blue down and it's it's pretty bright, it's pretty interesting. I like how the um, the Canon woodwork looks in that sort of brighter colour. I've also went in with Saigor Brown to do the other wood parts on those carriages just to um, tidy them up. We're now going to move on to shading the blue because we're going to have to shade it. It's a more solid color than the contrast paints. So for that, we're going to be using Green Stuff World's Wash Ink 
ether blue. Uh, this should just give us a little bit of tone without going too crazy with it because we don't necessarily want to go utterly mad with the shading, we just want to have it as a little bit extra. So you can see down here I'm going to thin it out a touch. And then I know all those cannons are going to fall over, so I'm going to move them to the side as well. I had to put them in place, I just wanted to see what they look like. But for now, they can get back off the ship. And then we'll start and carefully just apply this bit of shade in here. And we'll do that to all of the blue areas. With the blue wash down and drying, we're going to move on to our gold details, our brass. So we're looking at our figurehead up front and a lot of the stuff <clears throat> on our back. So for that, we're going to be using Vallejo Model Color Brass, pretty straightforward. And we're going to just start base coating those parts down. So the figurehead, pretty straightforward. It's a nice mermaid, so we'll just get a good coat of brass onto her. We may need more than one coat here because we're trying to cover over not only the grey primer, but some of the contrast paint as well. So need a couple of coats on that. And then on the back, we're going to be doing the, um, see it on this shot here, the lantern on the back, the wooden framework across the back and the window frames as well. So we've quite a, a fair bit to do. So it's just a case of taking our time and just carefully getting those couple of coats of brass down. With our brass down, it's taken about two or three coats. We now have a nice shiny figurehead. We have a little bit of detailing on our cabin door and round at the back, we have quite a lot going on back here as well just to make it nice and shiny and bright. So at this stage, we're gonna move on to shading our brass and we don't want to hang around on any detail too long. So for the brass, we're gonna be using Cryptek Armor Shade Gloss and we're just gonna be giving it all a coat of that. So pretty straightforward. It's a very heavy shade. I will say that again, like I say it every time I use it, it's a very heavy shade. You want to uh, thin it down a little bit if you can. Uh, before we start applying it. So let's look at it from the on the lantern first. So we'll just apply it there and I don't mind it filling in all the lattice work because the lantern's obviously not lit. It's not going to be shining or anything like that. So I'm happy to go ham on that lattice work, fill all that in uh, with the shade, but even if it doesn't, it's fine. And what we're gonna be doing is going around all our brass details and just giving it all this shade. So with our brass now shaded, we're just letting it dry. It's it's quite heavy in places, so we're just gonna be letting that dry. You'll see it all properly at the end, I hope. So we're gonna move on to our metals, as I said before. And uh, this is gonna be part of a two step, which is really gonna bring the ship a lot closer to being completed. Um, in fact, it is almost going to complete the ship. So what we're gonna be doing is taking our swivel guns, which I've mounted, our cannons, we're going to be taking um, the base of the main mast and a few bits of bracing, which are up here. All the parts that are sort of not brass or other metal, sort of, to, to say it lightly. And uh, we're going to be base coating those in a dark metallic color. So the dark metallic color I've chosen is Citadel Base Iron Warriors. Now there are plenty, I'm going to say this a lot more, uh, in the in the coming three colors ups, there's always alternative paints to use. However, these are the paints I have, so always look at the paints you have before you think, ah, I should use what John's using, or I should use what, you know, whatever uh, tutorial guy is using. Uh, always think about what you have before you go and buy anything new, particularly in this this current climate. So, all of our swivel guns are just going to get a base coat of the Iron Warriors. All our cannons, obviously the cannon part of the cannon is going to get a base coat of it as well. And I'm choosing this color because cannons, I think it's, I'm not overly, this is, this is the part where my historical mind breaks down a little bit because I don't really know how, 
prominent bronze was uh, for the use of cannon making, uh, particularly in, in this era. Um, so the safest bet and the, bet, the, the way that most people are going is a sort of a dark, almost black. So if we base coat with the Iron Warriors and then we put a black contrast paint over that, we're going to get something that's effectively correct. As per, you know, if you watch Pirates of the Caribbean or anything that has this era of sail uh, with cannons and stuff, you're going to see a lot of black. And uh, some people in the comments can tell me, enlighten me a little bit more on this. Like genuinely, guys, enlighten me a little bit more on materials uh, of cannons and stuff like that, because it's really not something that's in my vision or in my um, on my radar, really, for stuff that I would research on the daily. So that's what we're going to be doing now. And when we come back, this will be dry and we can move on. So with the metals now down, we can have a look at how our swivel guns and our cannon look a little more interesting. I like the fact that the gray primer and the dry brush has helped accentuate the details on the cannons just a little bit. You can see the they're, they're still quite apparent of the shape and stuff. We might ruin that now though, <laughs> because we're going to be going uh, and using some black. And the black is going to be, uh, choice-wise, contrast Black Legion. It's a heavier black than Black Templar, um, but obviously black paint with a little bit of water would do the same trick. However, we're going to be using it on all our metals. We're also going to be using it on the edging and the banding all over the hull as well. So this is going to be a very involved step, but it is going to bring uh, our ship to completion, more or less. We have a little bit of work to do on the windows at the back, but apart from that, that basically finishes the ship. So let's just crack it open and let's get to work on it. So what I'll show first is a little bit of the railing and stuff here because Black Templar is a good heavy contrast paint and does go down very well. It'll also retain a little bit of our dry brush work as we proceed with it. So it's not going to be just a flat black color. It is actually going to do a little bit of work for us here as well uh, with the underlying layers. So that's fine. Uh, on the cannons, we want to thin it a little bit and we just want to give the cannons a coat of it, just a light air, a light-ish coat of it. That way we're still retaining a little bit of the metallic look, but at the same time we're getting a little bit of a deeper shade. So here we are, and um, what I'm gonna explain here briefly is what happened, or what I've done. So after painting the black onto the cannons, the swivel guns, and the banding, uh, I did a little bit on the windows on the back of the ship, and then I've assembled the whole thing and sealed it with a, a coat of um, satin varnish, which is just, in this case, Munitorum varnish, the Citadel stuff. And at that point, I realized I was going to be at the point where I was going to start going too far and take away from what Three Colors Up's all about and keeping things simple and straightforward. So I decided after the, the, uh, the varnish that that would be the ship complete. And I think what we have in the end is something that's going to be very striking under camera, as it is pretty much right now. And um, something is still going to look good when you have it sat in a cabinet. Now, obviously, Jerry's going ahead and showing how to detail up these ships further. So I know we've had some suggestions before, uh, particularly on the last Blood and Plunder painting tutorial, uh, where we could do a further step. And I think Jerry's covering that very well with the rigging and extra bits and bobs that he wants to add to uh, the ship that he's been working on. However, Keeping it simple, I think we have what is a very charming, very striking looking model and something that you're only really going to have one or two of on the tabletop at any one, one time, I believe. So let's see if we can show off a few things. It's such a big model, it's very awkward for me to move around. Um, probably better on the further out shot here. You can see the back where it's just a little bit of the Black Legion uh, contrast paint into the windows. They're not perfect, but they're fine. The blue is so stand out on this. I'm starting to think it's not really French anymore. It's something else, but it definitely does stand out and looks very interesting. The cannons and the masts I've tacked in with a little bit of glue 
I'm pretty sure Jerry is going to want to move those around and whatnot when it comes to any sort of gameplay. So they're just tacked down just for now so that I can transport the model without any real hassle. So I hope you, you've enjoyed this one. I've enjoyed painting this one. It has been a longer painting process for me. I'm not sure how this video is going to turn out probably around the same length as they usually are. Um, because showing steps only takes a certain amount of time, but getting something this size done to the same standard all across is a bit more challenging. That said though, I think we'll wrap it up here. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave your comments down below. And as always, take care, stay safe, and see you again very soon.